don't burn railroad ties. They got some tar-like stuff on them, and when you burn it, you burn brain cells. It's worse than crack. KDOI Podcasting. That stands for Chemo's Den of Iniquity. Hi, I'm your host, Timothy Chemo Bryan. And here, we create more than we consume through projects that inspire you to drop your cell phone and pick up anything at hand to create something. We also talk with artists that want to remove the mysterious veil between artists and audiences. Today's project is our wood burning project. We don't need no water. Let the bleep bleep burn. Burn, bleep, bleep, burn. Okay, we're going to avoid the explicit rating here, and we'll just move on. That's from an old uh, dance rap song that we won't even get into. Music was last episode's project. This episode, let's burn some wood. All right, so where did I get the idea for this project? Well, many years ago in the Wayback Machine, come with me, when I was a kid, my older brother Mike got a wood burning kick when he was about eight or ten, which which meant that I had to be the a little annoying brother of four or six. And the kit came with a short cord, and naturally the only outlet we could use was near a window. I'm pretty sure we were told it was defective, and the store was out of stock in perpetuity. One thing I do know, it didn't come with a block of wood. So there we were, living in Rockford, Illinois, amongst trees and railroad ties. Twigs and branches are not really the best thing for a hot iron. And I'm sure we did some permanent brain damage from the fumes that came off the railroad ties that were treated with some tar-like substance. We tried to use these as our objects to uh, do a wood burning on. Not so good, kids. Don't recommend it. That's your first safety brief today. Don't burn railroad ties. They got some tar-like stuff on them, and when you burn it, you burn brain cells. It's worse than crack. I also recently saw this project on the Art of Manliness podcast website. Art of Manliness, not a sponsor of of this podcast, but still a great podcast in its own right. So Brett McKay, the host and head dude over at AOM, was writing about gifts that men can make and give to family and friends. So this, that rekindled for me this interest in wood burning. So thanks, Brett. Another great idea. For me, this season is all about making projects and giving them away as gifts. So this one will go to the wife for sure, mainly because I like the ways that she squeals when she gets a project and the way my stepson looks at me once I complete a project versus when he finishes another cross stitch, which his mom loves to do, and my walls are covered with cross stitches. It's my way to fight back at the cross stitch. And this coming from the man that has knitted two baby blankets and for this Christmas is knitting my wife a blanket. But that's a whole other podcast. Anyhow, it is a great gift for loved ones because you can totally personalize it any way you choose to. And folks, this project isn't for guys. It isn't just for gals, trans, intersex, whatever flavor you call yourself, you can make this happen. And the person receiving it will not be able to return it. That's point point number one. But they will cherish it because it is a -a one-of-a-kind project. You can't buy this on Amazon. Amazon, not a sponsor of this podcast, but definitely a beneficiary of my money and ordering. Okay, let's start this bad boy up, shall we? All right, I already gave you one word of caution to begin with. Don't burden railroad ties. Go get your piece of wood at a reputable wood supplier. All right? Another word of caution is, since you're going to be using electricity and a hot iron, this hot iron can actually melt your skin in a matter of seconds, and it will hurt a lot. We're talking third-degree burns, folks, is highly possible. So make sure you have near you, not water, but a fire extinguisher that is not water-based, but one that is made for electrical fires. If anything, the last thing you want to do is put water out on a live circuit. Not a good day. And then I know you will definitely want to drop me an email. And remember, the email address is kdoipodcasting at gmail.com. So if you do drop water on a live electrical circuit, 
feel free to email me and then I'll play this episode back for you, reminding you, do not drop water on a live electrical circuit. I would recommend not doing this project on a wooden table. All right, that might sound a little bit, huh? Don't do it on a wooden table. Me, I have a solid oak hand carved table in my man cave. Hell no, am I going to put anything on it that's going to mar that finish? Plus, it's a wood burning project, okay? Did I mention the word wood? If you have this on a wood table, you might slip and burn the wood on your table. So protect your wood, and especially if it's old wood like I have, and don't use a wood table. I actually used a old metal rolling uh, bedside computer desk. Now, if I burn that, it's only going to give it more character. So lastly, watch where your hands are in relation to the iron. Yes, you don't want to touch the iron. Also, you don't want to touch the uh, burned wood that, uh, that the iron just touched. It will cool down quickly, but initially it's going to be burning red hot. The iron does get very hot. So take breaks. It'll burn your hand. Go slowly. There is no need to burn your fingers off, okay? Your loved one can wait. If it takes an extra day or two, they can wait. Love can wait. Remember, they taught us that in the 80s. Love can wait in those after-school specials. And the reason why you're going to wait is there is nothing less sexy or romantic than having third-degree burns on the tips of your finger. Really, it's a turnoff for most people. All right, safety brief is over. Here's your list of materials. Go get you some wood. Yes, this is a wood burning project. Hence, you need wood. I would recommend going to Michael's. Michael's is not a sponsor of this podcast, but another great place that has a lot of my money in their stores. One day I'm going in there and taking my money back. They have these plaques that make the perfect canvas for your project. Mine had some uh, hairy splinters that you may want to knock off with sandpaper if you don't like your wood hairy. I don't mind hairy wood. My thought is I'm using a hot iron on a big old chunk of wood. I can burn the hair off. Now that's what I call manscaping, and you won't find that on Art of Manliness. I checked. For safety's sake, the last thing you want to do is have a splinter go into your hand when you have a hot iron in your hand. Knock it down with some light sanding. Okay, enough of the double entendres. I used a plaque that had a few ridges on the sides. I had a plaque that had a few ridges on both sides. And it gave more of a three-dimensional feel. Cost for the plaque, about eight bucks. And the size of it uh, on the longest ends was about six inches. On the shortest ends, uh, a diameter line would be about four inches. So if it was a just a square block of wood, four by six, since it's a plaque, uh, it, it's going to be a, the size is going to be a little bit different, but the average is about four by six. Your next thing is get a wood burning kit. Next thing you need to get is a wood burning kit. Hence the name of the episode, wood burning project. Okay, I know, I know. Get a simple one. It can be found at Michaels for under twenty bucks. Mine was about fifteen and came with three extra tips. Just what you need for your hot iron. Each tip has its own special job to do, and one of them is great for shading, which is probably which I, which is the one that I should have used for this project. I know the one is great for fine lines, and then the attachment uh, that's initially attached to the iron is an all-purpose tip, so it can handle just about everything on there okay, but uh, y you'll have some specialty tips on there. Feel free to use them. Play around with them. Play with your tips. It's a good thing. No one's going to call the cops on you if you play with your tips. The next thing I'd get is a pair of pliers. Uh, I have usually have about three hanging around my house at all times. You can use Leatherman or other multi-tool uh, pliers. Uh, you'll be changing out the tips or tightening them down, especially if you have a heavy hand on your hot iron like I do. Okay, That tip will work its way loose because it's just screwed in there. That tip is just screwed into your hot iron. So make sure that you uh, keep it in there nice and tight. If you have to, if you notice the tip coming loose, turn off the iron, let it sit for a few minutes, take your pliers, tighten it down. And I'm not talking, you know, like vice clamp, you know, 300 uh, square inches of pressure. Tighten it down a good amount. Uh, do it by hand. Obviously, do it by hand. 
but uh, you, you know, until it doesn't move anymore and you'll be fine. Don't, don't wrench it down. Just get it in there and get it nice and tight. Your cost for that, um, you should have pliers around your house. You should have a, a multi-tool around your house. If you don't have a multi-tool, you can pick them up at Lowe's. Lowe's, not a sponsor of this show. Or Home Depot, definitely not a sponsor of this show. Um, you can pick them up there for 15 bucks, 10 bucks. Um, you know, get, get a decent Leatherman or a Gerber for 30 bucks. Don't get a knockoff brand. Get an actual name brand. And uh, you can use that thing till the cows come home. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to have around the house. You need it. You need one in your car. You need one in your man cave. And you need one in the garage. Get three. They're small. Your next thing is you want to grab some templates. Now, I saw a few at Michael's uh, for about 10 bucks. Now, the reason I chose the templates that I chose is my wife loves uh, Florida leaves. And I knew that I wanted that incorporated into the design. Now, why does she like the Florida leaves? She's not, she's not French. She's not from New Orleans. She loves the Saints. She likes the quarterback for the Saints. She thinks he's cute. All right. Hey, that's fine. Whatever. But ever since uh, she saw him on TV, she loves the Saints. She loves the Florida leaves. She's digging that. So I knew that I, that was going to be in the design uh, from the get-go. The other uh, part of the design in there, uh, it says you and me, which is nice and it's cute and it's adorable. So there you go. Uh, get, get a good set of templates. We're only about 10 bucks. So what are we looking at right now? So we're looking at 15 for the uh, wood burning kit, um, eight bucks for the wood, 10 bucks for the templates, you know, a, a couple of bucks uh, for, well, you know, the pliers, but you, you can get a you know, good thing of pliers for less than five bucks and, and that'll work in a pinch. Um, pencils. You, if you don't have pencils at your house, use a pen, all right? But don't use a, a felt tip marker or a permanent marker, and I'll explain why. Grab some pencils, grab some drafting pencils. As a matter of fact, if you've been listening along, a couple of episodes ago, we did pencil drawings. You could use those pencils that you bought for that project on this project. Oh, I just saved you a ton of money. You can shoot me an email at kdoipodcasting at gmail.com. Now, before we uh, get into this uh, project... I'd like to take some time out and uh, thank our network sponsor, Gagopod. And uh, this will give you a chance to gather everything together. But definitely listen to the promo because we've got some great things going on with Gagopod. We've got uh, a new podcast with uh, Gagopod Network, and that is uh, Garbled Twistery from my guy out there in Chicago. He used to be out here in D.C. with us, and he moved back to my hometown in Chicago. And you definitely want to te- check out Garbled Twistery. The other uh, podcast you want to check out there is Pod Fader, which is a wonderful podcast about pod fading, about you know shutting down your podcast and how you can avoid doing that. And there's another one that is called Get Lost Racing, which is all about getting lost racing and Merchants of Dirt. This is how I got to meet my guy Kyle Bondo over at Gagopod, Merchants of Dirt podcast fantastic he talks with mr murphy all the time which is a wonderful character i think mr murphy actually steals the show sometimes but definitely get on to gagopod.com and take a listen to our promo here for it it's got some good information for you hey this is timothy chemo o'brien head instigator at kdoi podcasting you know we create more than we consume every other week and we want to create with you so check us out on our website kdoipodcasting.com email is at kdoipodcasting at gmail.com and the twitter is at kdoi underscore podcasting i want to thank you for the download that you just did for the subscription that you just made and for sharing this podcast with your friends so thank you for creating more than you consume with us here at kdoi podcasting kdoi is a proud member of the gagopod network gagopod place for storytellers that need a strategy, a platform, and a chance to be heard. Learn how to create your next podcast at gagopod.com. All right, let's get at this, folks. We got some great info from Gagopod. So your first step is to address the wood. Hello, wood. No, 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 not like that. Really, look at the piece of wood you have chosen. This is your canvas. Get to know it. Look for defects, like impressions that will probably not come out. You will need to work around that to cover it up. 
Look for any big cuts or big splinters that you did not get rid of. Now is the time to do that. Now while you got a big old hot iron in your hand, and you're like, oh, I didn't get that splinter that is, you know, three feet long that I should have knocked off earlier with my, you know, sanding paper. That's a little too late. Address the wood first. Take a good look at it. Get to know it. Okay. You're going to be working on this piece of wood for a few hours. Next, what you want to do, map out where that design is going to go. My design, fairly simple. I wanted the you and me to be center on the piece of wood, on that plaque of wood. And the floor de leaves are going to be across from each other. So it, 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 the uh, design really balances that out on the left and right side and the top and bottom. There's enough uh, white space, quote unquote. I'm doing air quotes like you can see me doing air quotes. What I would like you to do at this point is when I tell you to, I would like you to do air quotes for me. All right. One, two, three, air quotes, white space and air quotes. Fantastic. Thanks for uh, doing that for me here. Make sure you have plenty of white space around there, folks. And make sure your stencils are tight against the wood. So once you get it mapped out, once it looks good to you with those stencils, get them down there tight. Don't glue them. For the love of God, do not super glue these stencils down. Because you're burning the wood, don't burn the stencils. Myself, I use plastic stencils. Um, but make sure that they are down where you want them to be. If you feel comfortable, tape them down. I did mine by hand because my stencils were not super huge or super tiny. So I just did mine by hand and knocked it out that way. Outline the stencil with your pencil and make sure it's sharp. No use in using a dull pencil. It's just going to make your design dull. Once you get the outline uh, for all the wood, carefully remove the stencil. You will not get a second chance at this. So make sure that you're happy with how you outline that stencil. If you make a mistake at this point, it's best you know do it as best as race as best as you can. Again, I'm using plastic stencils because I have a little bit of a heavy hand, and um, I haven't done this in a long time. If you want to use a paper stencil, you go right ahead. If you want to make your own stencils and make it out of paper, knock it out. But remember, don't rip the delicate edges because then you just ruin the stencil, and then you're gonna have to make another one. You may want to start off with a plastic stencil. Once you've removed that stencil, look at the placement again. Is there enough room? Is everything spaced out nicely so your lines are visible? Because once you burn that wood, your lines aren't going to be visible. You're going to have to do it by memory. All right. That's why I want you to study it very carefully. Know that design in and out. You also want to make sure that your stencils are not sitting right on top of each other. Now, if you, if you look at uh, my pictures uh, there that I have, you're going to see I have everything placed out pretty well. The uh, fleur de lis are not on top of the letters. You know, if I were to put them right on top of the letters, it might have melted into each other and you wouldn't have been able to tell what the hell was going on. So make sure that you have everything spaced out nicely. Balance it out. If you have to take out a ruler and measure it out, go ahead. I did mine by eye because I kind of like that rustic feel to it. Okay, I'd like that. If it's a little bit of an imperfection, I can go, hey, you know what? I made it for you. Imperfection and all. And trust me, you've seen pictures of me. This is imperfection personified, folks. In the dictionary, my picture's right there for imperfection. All right. So uh, you've removed the stencil. Now it's time to plan out uh, if this will just be outlined or if you're going to shade it in. Now, my mistake was not using the shaded tip when most of my project really should have been shaded. Remember... It's been a lot of years since I picked up a wood burning iron. So take your time, plan it out. Yeah, my wife loved it. And the guys at work are jealous. Uh, they're not showing their wives because they're like, oh, if I show my wife, then I'll have to do it. And yes, you will. The thing of it is, is that the guys at work, they're like, wow, you did a wood burning kit. You did wood burning over the weekend. Pretty nice. The wife is squealing. She's happy. Um, I can see all the mistakes that I made and where I could have done better. And I'm telling you where my mistakes are so that way you can avoid them. Plan, plan, and plan again. Just know what you're going to be doing ahead of time. Now, in one of my pictures there, you saw that there's a wood burning uh, book there. By all means, pick one up. Take a look at it. See, you see the technique there for yourself. My technique is not the right technique, as you can see in the uh, final pictures. But you know what? It's okay. I did it. 
A lot of other people haven't done it. Am I going to do another one? You betcha, because I spent 15 bucks on a wood burning kit. Damn right, I want to do another one. And I got a lot of wood up in my garage to burn. And we're going to burn it the right way. I would take the uh, rest of the day off after you get done and just make notes on where you want to shade and maybe do a sketch of the final piece. So that way you have an, a mental idea of where it's going to go. Myself, I didn't sketch it out. Um, I didn't take the time to figure out, you know, the shading aspect of it. Would it have been better if I would have done that? Yeah, I think so. But you know what? It came out okay. It's, it's, not, it's not a bad thing. You know what it is. You know what it looks like. Everyone that I've shown it to is like, yeah, and that says you and me. And those are some fleur de lis. And then I explain what the fleur de lis mean, and they're like, okay. All right, folks, here's the moment of truth. It's taken me this long to get to this point. Put iron to wood. Let the iron heat up a few minutes, okay? You want it to get nice and burning hot. Now, how are you going to know when it's nice and burning hot? You can put your hand around it, not on it, but around it. If it's hot, if it feels warm, it's probably hot. One odd thing I did is I flipped over my wood, and when I thought it was hot enough, I put it on the back side of the wood and tried to uh, draw a line on it. If it wasn't good, then I let it warm up some more. You also want to make sure that before you plug your iron in, that the tip is tightly fastened to the iron. I cannot stress that enough because the last thing you want to do is have that tip fall out of the iron and then you've got a hot iron and a hot tip sitting on your wood and that's no fun. Be near some good ventilation as there will be some smoke, not a whole lot. And depending on your smoke detectors, you may have to have a fan or an open window. Mine was fine, which kind of scares me about my smoke detectors. I mean, I'm a vape kind of guy, and I'm not that kind of vape guy that makes fog appear within a three-mile radius that you can't see through. But I do like to vape in my man cave. So I'm a little bit worried uh, if I go ahead and do another, uh, uh, another wood burning project. I might just throw a fan and open up the window and be done with it. But then again, I got a few cats too, so I got to watch out for that. So you've got your wood, you, you get your iron on your wood, slowly outline. And I mean slowly outline that stencil. I would recommend doing the outline first versus the shading. Put some pressure, but then not force it into the wood, okay? Let it melt the wood and flow with it. Now, this is going to sound a lot like uh, the uh, music uh, making podcast that I did last episode. You know, just flow with it, man. Seriously, just flow with it. Rock it back and forth many times, short distances, an inch or two, and go back and forth. Work your way through the outline. I prefer doing the outline first as it does create an indentation in the wood and it'll give you a guide to as far, you know, to a however far you can go. It kind of gives you a nice border there that, hey, you know, don't go past that line. Now, once you got the entire outline done, take a break. Okay, I'm going to just going to tell you right now, take a break. Your hand should be tired. It's cramping. It's hot. That little iron is going to get really hot. And you'll probably have uh, inhaled some of that smoke. Now, if you're not a smoker, well, that's not going to be good for you. If you are a smoker, you're going to be like, hmm, that smells very nice. I think I can, you know, wrap that up and uh, put it in a little blunt and there you go. No, don't do that. The, the smell of pine burning is a great smell for me. Now, I'm a sometimes carpenter and I love the smell of wood. And for me, it, you know, it smells like victory, right? Reminds me of Apocalypse Now, which my wife still won't sit and watch with me. And I'm talking about Apocalypse Now Redux because two and a half hours isn't enough. We have to add an extra hour in there. So three and a half hours of Apocalypse Now on a Saturday night. You had me at hello. Once the outline is done, then go ahead and work the shading. Again, a firm hand, but do not push that iron too much into the wood. You may see some flare-ups and maybe a flame or two. Don't panic, folks. You're burning wood. Okay, you might see a flame. That's okay. Make sure you have your pink towel at the standby. All right, once the shading is done. Now, folks, again, the shading is going to start after you've had a break. Don't go have a beer. Just grab some water. Go outside. Think about what you're going to do next. Think about the next step, which would be the shading. Now, once that shading is done, step back. Take a look. Is there anything else you want to do? Take a break. Go outside. Don't have a beer. Grab some water or grab some uh, kombucha uh, tea. 
and uh, you know you might even want to wait till the next day when you take a look at that wood go over some of the areas that didn't get burned too well or as deeply as you wanted to take your time notice I'm saying take your time a lot because I want you to take your time and this is why you probably want to start with a stencil first while you're looking over your uh, project there how about you take a listen to our newest podcast from Gagopod? It's called Gray Heroes, and no one gets out clean. Do you like your heroes with a little more than two dimensions? How about some dirt underneath their fingernails? Tired of heroes in tights or white hats? Come on over to Gray Heroes, where no one gets out clean. People who play by their own rules. Take a listen at grayheroes.com. And put those pretty flyboys in capes and tights to bed. Gray Heroes. Just a hair over on this side of the law. Gray Heroes. No one gets out clean. New stories every two weeks. Sponsored by the Gagopod Network. Find out more at gagopod.com. For storytellers that need a strategy, a platform, and a chance to be heard. Learn how to create your next podcast at Gagopod. Dot com. Oof, that guy sounded like he needed to burn some wood for sure. Very intense, folks. Gray Heroes, it's going to be very intense. I'm excited for that to come out soon. Okay, so you've checked it. You're happy with it. You're done at this point. I would say the length of time on this project, three hours for a plaque. That's about eight inches in, di in diameter at its longest edge, okay? Um, at minimum three hours on that. Uh, now, some folks want to put a finish on it, which will deepen the burn parts. I kept it unfinished because I like the natural color of pine and the stark contrast between the burnt wood and the untouched areas. Give it a try. I know you will get a great deal of enjoyment from this project. And hey, you can personalize it any way you want. I chose uh, the stencil because it was fairly easy. And the floor de leaves, they're, they're pretty difficult to do correctly. Uh, I smudged through them. I'll be honest with you. I smudged through them. Life lesson learned there. Take your time. You know, use all the tips for what they're supposed to be used for and map it out. Again, if I were to do this one again, I would uh, use a, a shading tip for most of the areas that I filled in. All right. Well, that about does it here for us at KDOI Podcasting. I definitely want to thank you for listening and for participating with us on our projects. And we hope that today's project gives you that push to go out and have some fun and make some art. Please share your story behind your project as well as sharing pictures of your project. For me, half the fun is hearing from you guys and seeing and hearing about the stories and seeing what you guys do with the projects. Because if I can see you do the project, then I know that this has been successful. And, you know, really, we all want to be successful at some point, right? All right. So how do you email us? Well, you go to kdoipodcasting at gmail.com. You can get us at the Twitter at KDOI, pod, KDOI underscore podcasting. That's how good I am with Twitter, folks, K at KDOI underscore podcasting. And, you know, our website is kdoipodcasting.com. And that's where you can find all the show notes and you can uh, find out about all of our episodes, look at our past episodes, get hooked up with Gagopod, and you can check out funny pictures of me while you're at it and find out, out, find out about my new podcasts. Again, I want to thank you for joining me here at KDOI Podcasting, where we create more than you consume. Let us know how you're doing out there and create with us. Until next time, have a great two weeks. using a hot iron on a big old chunk of wood, I can burn the hair off. Now that's what I call manscaping, and you won't find that on Art of Manliness. I checked.